second is a versatile and innovative polyrhythmic sequencer with an aim at facilitating creativity in electronic music. In order to set up second in Ableton, you need to have two MIDI channels. The first will contain your instrument and the other one will contain second. On your instrument channel, set the input to the second channel and instead of post effects, choose second. In order for the sequencer to produce notes, you need to toggle the gate on. Alternatively, you can click the dice to randomize the value. Click on the three dots on the right and let's reset the value. Lower density will mean less note will be randomized. Higher density value means more notes will be randomized. Click on the three dots on the lane where you can nudge the sequence backwards or forward. I'll mention at this point that you can see the value of each parameter on the black bar in the bottom of the sequencer. At the moment, the sequencer is only playing the key of C as it's set to a chromatic scale on the key of C. You can choose between a variety of scales. Let's stay on C on minor blues. Let's randomize the value of pitch A. If you hover over the last step of the sequence, you have a little triangle appearing on the top right corner. Let's drag it to reduce the steps to 4. Let's do the same to pitch B. Let's set up a stepping up sequence for pitch B and a stepping down sequence for pitch A. Let's also drag the probability lane to reduce it to 4 steps. You can set up a probability for which note will be playing. If these arrows are pointing up, only pitch A will be playing. If these arrows are pointing down, only pitch B will be playing. You can use the dice to randomize the probability value. You can also be more purposeful with the probability lane and play around with polyrhythms. Let's increase the steps on this lane to 5. Let's set up the first 4 to 50% probability, but the fifth step to only play pitch B. There are a few more parameters to the sequencer. Let's reveal them by clicking on hold, ratchet, length, and chance. The hold lane is most functional when paired with a monosynth with glide or portamento enabled. If enabled, the step will extend the note until the next one occurs. You can change the direction to go either forward or backwards, forward and backwards, or random. Ratchet divides a step into multiple smaller subdivision. Just click and drag up or down to set a value. In order for the example to be audible, let's change the length of the note to be pretty short. Next, let's set a random value for the length lane. Click on the three dots in the chance lane, where you can set a value for the randomization. Let's set the low value to 50 and click randomize. This is essentially the same as clicking on the dice. Now, the chance lane is randomized between 50% and 100% for every note to be played. Let's reset the chance and length lane. 
And then let's talk about the tab on the bottom left corner of the sequencer, where we can change the clock, add swing, change the velocity, and octave. We will play this example together with our beat. Next, let's load a blank preset. Let's change the length of the gate and pitch A to 4. We will add a stepping down sequence. Let's set the clock to 4. That is to explain the three different modes, clock, gate, and MIDI triggering. On clock mode, whenever a gate is activated, the corresponding lane will get activated as well. On gate mode, whenever a gate is activated, the first lane will get activated with it. Whenever the next gate activated, the second lane will get activated with it. On MIDI triggering mode, the gate will disappear, and now the rhythm will be determined by MIDI notes. It's important that on MIDI triggering mode, you add notes either above C3 or below C0 and I will provide an explanation why in just a moment. In the scale section, there are two transpose mode, before scale and after scale. Before scale means if I increase the transpose by one semiton, it will jump from C to the second note in the scale. If I set it up to after scale, it will jump from C to C sharp. If you toggle the piano symbol on, you can transpose the entire sequence using the MIDI notes C1 to C3. If you click on the pencil, you can then customize the scale, such as removing and adding notes. Click on the three dots, where you can save and upload different scales. There are quite a few interesting things you can do with the pattern section. Let's set up a different pattern at number two. Let's use the dice to do that quickly. So now, pattern two sounds like this. Pattern number one sounds like this. If you click on the piano symbol, you can use the MIDI notes between C0 and B0 to shift between the different patterns. Let's set up the notes C0 and C sharp 0. If you want to browse between the different presets but want to maintain the scale, all you need to do is toggle scale lock on and then go to the factory, choose a different scale and we'll maintain our C minor blues scale. With the scale lock off, each preset has its own scale. Another brilliant feature of this sequencer is that you can export up to 128 bars of the sequence. All you need to do is click and drag on the bottom right corner, click on the double hour, then click here and drag it into your project. Now I have 128 bars of this sequence. Next, let's load a blank preset. 
Let's start by randomizing few of the parameters. Let's set up the probability like so, and let's load the minor blue scale. Let's reveal the next three parameters, octave, transpose, and velocity. Once you reveal these parameters, they will be grayed out in the panel in the bottom left corner. On the octave line, you can transpose two octaves up and two octaves down. We can be purposeful with the transpose line and increase a few of the steps by 12 semitons. And let's add a random value for the velocity. Next, let's open the MIDI assignment lanes. And let's also open our synth. I'm using Vital. Let's set up the first lane to CC1. Let's add a random value. Let's go to the envelope, right click, and learn MIDI assignment. At the moment, the envelope is opening too much. So let's add to the MIDI assignment lane. Click on the three dots and let's set a maximum value of 50. Let's randomize the velocity lane once more. On the top bar, you can redo an action or you can undo an action. Click on the step lock and then if you head to the pitch A, you can see that on the bottom right corner, there is a little gray circle appearing. Let's toggle the circle on, on the first four notes. Now, whenever I randomize this lane, the first four notes will not change. And that's it for this walkthrough. Make sure to experiment and have fun producing.